Hello everybody. In this short video clip I want to discuss with you when we do enzyme kinetics we often use a michaelis menten plot but this usually is not terribly helpful because it doesn't tell us really Vmax or Km. But here I show you when a michaelis menten plot can come in really handy, when it's really useful. So what's the problem with the michaelis menten plot again? Well, we plot rate versus the substrate concentration. And if we do so, we usually get a hyperbolic curve like that. So far, so good. But the problem is that because it is a curve, we cannot get good values for Vmax or Km because we don't know where this curve actually plateaus off. So it could, for example, go like that. And we could make a guesstimate about Vmax, which may be somewhere there. So that would be perhaps our Vmax here. But we don't know. And therefore, michaelis menten plot is not very useful. However, there are certain uh, instances where it is really useful because it tells us whether an enzyme actually behaves like a true michaelis menten enzyme. And what we can find is that for usually an enzyme that behaves according to the laws of michaelis menten we will see this hyperbolic uh, curve. We will see something like that. But occasionally we can also see deviations from this curve. So, for example, we might observe something like this. So, we have a very slow start of the reaction and only when we have lots, when we add more and more substrate, we see all of a sudden something like this. So we see what is called a sigmoidal curve. Sigmoidal or S-shaped form of the curve, which very clearly indicates that the enzyme does not follow the classic michaelis menten rules. What does this sigmoidal curve indicate? It indicates usually that the enzyme is made up of several subunits like that and each of these little squares represents a subunit and these subunits actually interact with, with each other depending on how much substrate uh, we add. So if we add a little bit of substrate only one of the subunits will bind it and it's fairly reluctant but the more uh, substrate actually gets bound the easier it gets for the other sub uh, units to bind the substrate. This behavior is called cooperativity. Cooperativity because the different subunits of the enzyme actually cooperate with each other. And if you like this is uh, some kind of almost a uh, feed-forward uh, mechanism that we are observing here. So if we see an S-shaped curve, a sigmoidal curve like that, we know that the enzyme does not behave like a michaelis menten uh, enzyme and that there is a good indication that this enzyme actually shows cooperativity. So that's one thing where we can immediately see when we plot rate versus uh, substrate concentration that there is something different with this enzyme. Uh, there's also a, a second uh, case uh, where this michaelis menten plot uh, comes in and that is, let me indicate that with a different color, this is when our enzyme at low substrate concentrations or reasonable substrate concentrations follows this michaelis menten curve, so like that. So that's absolutely fine, there's no problem. But then we see something like that. So at high or very high substrate concentrations, the rate actually goes down. 
and it uh, does something like that. And that looks uh, quite weird. And so how can we interpret this? Now, this would be a typical case of the more substrate we add, the slower the rate go uh, goes. And how can we interpret that? Well, up to this point here, in this direction here, everything is good, that's not a problem, but if we have lots of substrate, then the enzyme can't cope with that. So how do we, uh, how can we envisage that? Let's say that this is our enzyme, and here we've got our substrate, like that, that's the substrate, that's the enzyme. So the enzyme uh, will accept the substrate, so that's not a problem, and then it can turn it over. But if we've got two substrate molecules, so if we've got lots of substrate here, then the substrate sort of block each other's way uh, to the uh, enzyme. Now this case is actually called substrate inhibition. And it is not uncommon for enzyme to show a behavior like that, that they get inhibited when the substrate concentration is very high. So we have substrate inhibition in this case. And this is what the Michaelis-Menten plot really shows very nicely, that we find that the rate at very high substrate concentration goes down. So these are two cases where Michaelis-Menten plot is really useful. It shows us substrate inhibition and it also shows us if the enzyme deviates uh, when it has this cooperativity when the enzyme subunits talk to each other in a way and uh, react to whether a substrate has bound. So I hope uh, this makes sense and you found this useful and thank you very much for watching.